how does one heal a land? How does one heal a people's DNA? How does one reclaim a sacred site that has been devastated by the uranium industry? We live in what is known as the heart of the Grants Mineral Belt. From about the mid-1940s to the early 1990s, the Grants Mineral Belt was the largest ore producing area for uranium in the world. From 1941 uh, to about 1971, uh, uranium and vanadium uh, was mined for national defense purposes. Uh, and uh, in fact, from 1941 to 1945, uh, much of the uranium mined on the reservation uh, was, uh, was, was ultimately used in the uh, production of the first three atomic bombs. My father, as far as uranium goes, uh, worked in a mill uh, where he moved ore to make weapons, you know, for the, for the wars in World War II. And he got exposed to the raw material and eventually died of leukemia. And um, it was incurable and uh, that really bothered me because it took somebody that I dearly love away from me. When I worked in D.C., I worked with the Radiation Exposure Compensation Program. I worked as a claims analyst on all the um, native um, minor claimants. And that was when I was most um, touched by the impacts of uranium because all these studies that our own government and that these companies knew about the radiation levels and just doing the research for all the claimants that that they were exposed to hundreds and hundreds working month levels and that they weren't even aware that they weren't given the even any protection against the radiation exposure that they were given to Navajo and Indian uh, applicants for the compensation uh, never got paid uh, and the requirements were, you know, such that, were such that you, know, you almost had to have your one, one foot in the grave before you got compensated. Yeah. Some of our population never earned a cent from the uranium industry, but they suffer the adverse consequences of cancerous related illnesses just by the fact of where they live. There was uh, some uh, uh, studies that were done with soil, with the water, and a lot of concerns were arising from that is where my little brother here, Teddy, lives in the Northeast Church Rock area. Right now, um, I'm sandwiched uh, between two uh, uh, piles of waste, and the closest one is 500 feet, the other one is 600 feet. So, uh, as a downwinder, uh, meaning that the, the closest one, the 500 feet, the uh, uh, <clears throat> waste pile. When it blows, you can see the dust coming over uh, to the house and go over the mountain. So we don't know where that uh, wind uh, goes. Uh, so we continue to hear uh, that our federal agencies still think that there's ways to get uranium out of the ground and do it safely. Uh, when you bring uranium out, you uh, oxidize it. It goes from a um, relatively stable uh, metal in the earth to a very highly mobile and soluble metal uh, when you expose it to oxygen at the, at the surface of the earth. So it goes everywhere. Water tables are being threatened right now by the past uranium legacy issues where over uh, 2,000, 2,500 mines were mined on the Navajo Nation, all over the Navajo Nation. There's over 1,000 unreclaimed mines that are still, still spilling out radioactive uh, contaminants. Because the industry, for instance, the uranium mining industry has been allowed to, to be unregulated all these years, uh, we're, we're, you could probably see the onset of environmental collapse. It's primarily from the water. They can't seem to restore water that's been contaminated. And water is critical to anybody here in the Southwest. We started doing um, water tests along the river further down where the people in the villages uh, are still drinking the water. And our results show uranium 
and um, nuclear radioactivity pollution in the water. With this new wave of uranium mining that is being proposed, you know, here again in the Grants Mineral Belt on, on lands that are off the reservation, you know, and you commend the Navajo Nation, the Havasupai Nation, the Wallapai Nation, all these tribes that have passed resolutions banning uranium mining because we know the negative history, right? The Navajo people, you know, are still dealing with over a thousand uh, unreclaimed uranium mines on their nation. That kind of whole discussion around solving climate change or combating climate change has really been taken over um, by the same old players in the energy economy. And so it's resulting in um, more proposals for uranium mining and nuclear power plants and clean coal technologies. So that whole opportunity around the issue of climate change to change our way of life to something healthier is being hijacked. Congress is still talking about developing more power plants that are created by this uranium pallets uh, to, um, to fire up the power plants. And then the waste from that is going to go to another Indian tribe or even to another, uh, another state because the waste has got to go somewhere. I mean, like, um, we shouldn't even be accepting. I don't think the Indian tribe should be accepting the waste that's been created by, uh, by the government. We've already been um, involved in this environmental racism and genocide long enough. Indigenous people throughout the world no matter where it's at, Africa, South America, you know, Australia, a lot of times these companies come in, they exploit the materials, and then they just move on. They don't do any cleanup. They don't deal with the after effects. And we happen to always be left with that and to live with that. And, you know, when we ask for help or some sort of uh, assistance to make things better, then it's just not there. And it is environmental racism. Definitely. How does one reclaim a grazing site, a grazing area? How can you bring back the hundreds of our elders, our, our uncles, our grandparents, our brothers and sisters, our sons and nephews who have lost their lives so the United States could be the greatest power in the world, the nuclear power in the world? You know, how can we do that? And it's almost impossible. But the thing we can do right now is to stop all access to this again. And we're resilient. Navajos or Native people are resilient. We always find ways to survive.